Welcome to the channel guys. Today I'm going to be redrilling the Ford 8.8 .8 axle that I have in my Chevy S10. It is LS swap. Give you a peek under the hood. Haven't driven it, driven it in a while, but yes, I will be converting this to a GM bolt pattern. It has the Ford bolt pattern, obviously. It, it came out of a Ford Explorer, like an O2. Anyway, basically early 90s to probably 2003 or so Ford Explorers. You can find these in there. Ford Rangers, a lot of them have it. Uh, this axle would have 31 spline axles, uh, 373 gears, and basically, you don't really need to do anything to put a Ford 8.8 .8 into one of these except redrill the bolt patterns. Unless you're getting new wheels, you can just get Ford bolt pattern for the back, GM bolt pattern for the front, which can be kind of a hassle if depends on what you're what you're doing with it. But I'm gonna redrill mine just so I have the same bolt pattern all the way around and just don't want to deal with uh, two bolt patterns. But I have this side drilled already, as you guys can see. Kind of sits flush with the bed. These are old Firebird wheels that I have on here. Up here I have Corvette wheels. I actually have two other Corvette wheels. Got to get new tires for them. But this side is not redrilled yet. If you compare the two. I have I have a adapter on here, Ford to GM bolt pattern adapter. It's like here's the one that was on the other side. It's like inch and a quarter or so thick. That's why the wheels stick out. But that is why I am redrilling these. But I want to kind of go over the Ford axle and the SN. Basically, this axle will be a lot stronger, will take a lot more abuse than the axle that came in the S10 would take. Um, you don't really have to do a whole lot to get it in. Basically, I just got the axle, I took all the sway bar stuff off and just cleaned the axle up and it basically bolts in, into place. Like you can the spring purchase on the Ford 8.8 .8 might be like a quarter inch further apart than the other ones were, but it's not, it's not going to cause any binding issues or anything. But I will say though, I did take my bed off, took the springs off, everything off and repainted that stuff. When I put it back together, I put the wrong spring on the wrong side. So apparently the leaf springs, one of them is for driver's side. The other one is for the passenger side. So they are specific on which side they go. If you if you get them wrong and your axle does not seem to be fitting right, that's why. I struggled with that for quite a bit. But anyways, so let's get to redrilling these axles. I'm going to take the wheel off, the adapter off, and then I'm going to show you guys what I got. All right, guys, so I got the wheel off and I'm going to show you here what I got to redrill it. So this is a drill guide, like a jig to redrill these axles. It is from Hell's Gate Hot Rods. Right there, you guys can see. So basically, you bolt this on to... Uh, the hub and drill these out. It comes with both the drill bits, big and small, um, the instructions, and this. That's all you need. Uh, the drill bits are pretty decent. Uh, they might be able to be better. I don't know. They served me well. Actually, I smacked this thing through one of the holes when it went through it slipped and 
kind of chipped the edge off when I hit the other side. So uh, I went and just got a brand new Milwaukee one. So see how that one does on this side, but they drilled great on the other side. So one thing this, the instructions do say is uh, something about this is just made for the hub, not really the uh, rotor. So I also redrilled the rotor on the other side. What I did was basically, you guys can see here, the rotor is hub centric. It won't go up or down, but as you guys might be able to see, it goes backwards and forwards. Basically, I used to push it to one side, tighten the drill, the jig down, and then drill. It'll go back and forth. So I made sure I pushed it to one side on each hole every time I took it back off. So basically, here's what you want to do. Set this on here. Tighten each of the, put the lug nuts on and tighten each one down to like, I believe it's 21 foot pounds or something like that. Maybe 25. So what I would do is pull the rotor all the way to one side, then tighten them down. And the rotor fit perfectly on the other side, no problems with that. So I'm gonna try the same thing here. Gonna redrill the rotor first, then redrill the axle. And all you gotta do is take your brake caliber off, take your wheel off, don't have to take the axle out. And they uh, actually tell you in the instructions what kind of lug, uh, lug, not lug bolts. Whatever these are called. Um, the 625 shoulders. These are 620s, but you can, you can find them at an auto parts store, summer racing, anywhere. Pretty easy to find. They, they make it almost impossible to screw it up in the instructions if you actually put an effort in to read it. But it's very simple. And it works. So I'm going to start redrilling this one. Show you guys how I do it. All right, so I got the jig bolted down on the rotor drilling the rotor right now so right here is for your pilot bit and then here's to finish out the hole so basically the first hole draw out the pilot hole then you got to switch it move it one spot over and then drill another pilot hole then finish out the first hole and keep turning it so on and so forth so they do not recommend drilling the rotor with this, and uh, I'm not an expert on this. It works for me, so try it at your own risk. They only made this for the hubs, so, but I'm doing the, the rotors with it. So basically, I put the drill bit in there. I put some oil in it first, actually, and I got a towel down here, kind of catch that oil and start drilling keep the drill on a low speed and every couple maybe every 10 seconds or pull every 10 seconds or so pull it back out take the shavings off the drill bit and continue drilling doesn't take that long it just takes patience
so one thing I uh, tried to do is to not drill on through the rotor I, and not get into the hub. I, I had to get to, a little bit into the hub, obviously, but I didn't want it to affect the holes in the hub once I drill that because those have to be very accurate. As you guys can see, I got a little bit into the hub, but those will move around. This one, this moves around and that does not, and that has, that, the hubs are what really counts here. So try not to uh, go on through the hub. Otherwise you'll mess the complete thing up and have the wrong bolt pattern. All right, guys, so I got the holes all drilled. I got the wheel studs already in, just just barely in. I took the nuts, put them on backwards, just to pull them in, because there's no threads in there, just on the inside, just to start them, and tighten them up with a wrench, just to pull it all the way in. Then I'm gonna put the rotor on there, do the same thing again to pull them further in, put the brake caliber on, Put the wheel on and then torque them down and by the time I have them all torqued down they should be pulled all the way in should be wouldn't hurt to double check but yeah gotta take it for a drive I'm not gonna take it for a drive tonight yet it's getting kind of late and I gotta work tomorrow so yeah just thought I'd make this video try to help you guys out if you like the video, make sure you subscribe and like it. Uh, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.